Well, hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Ascent Podcast. So our topic for today, we're talking about spark and a conversation. How about you share what really stood out to you and what you really learned about that whole concept of sparking a self or inner conversation with yourself? Well, I don't want to overcomplicate this. Um, my reality is that what it sparked was something that I'm, I put pretty much put into practice on a day in and day out basis. Um, I have a lot of self conversation with myself and I'm not, if I'm by myself, um, and it's typically related around my goals, dreams, and aspirations for life. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, we've been doing this thing for a while. And as you know, I've, um, pretty much kind of come out of a very, you know, like, well, let me back up. Life is about peaks and valleys. Yes. You're either at the peak or you're in the valley. Yes. One of the two. And as you know, I was in a pretty deep valley there for uh, the previous two, starting back in 2022. Um, I felt basically for lack of better expression, I fell in a hole. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was a time when I didn't know if I could get back out of that hole. And I mean, I, I know that sounds pretty desperate and dire, but that's how I felt. Um, and by the grace of God and um, some of the folks that I have around me, uh, yours truly included, um, those folks that know me and know what I am about, what you know I am at my core, uh, really helped me to work my way out. And it was touch and go for quite a while. Um, and I'm, I thank God to where I am today, but it started with, uh, a lot of external conversation and, and then what that led to is a lot of internal conversation, um, for myself, I talk to myself a lot. Um, and it's more, it's not about what's going necessarily wrong anymore. It's about where, where where we're trying to go in my process and what, like I said, my goals, dreams, and aspirations, um, I am embarking right now, and we can get into that a little bit later as we move forward. I'm, embar- I'm embarking on a totally new chapter in my life right now. And as you know, anytime you're starting anything anything new and anybody that says they, that they don't, they're lying. Um, there is a lot of, there's fear. There's fear, there's anxiety, it's, there's self-doubt. Um, and I hit, I hit, you know, I, you, we've been riding together for a long, long, long time, we care to admit. But I hit that, I hit that proverbial wall uh, a week ago and it it scared me. Um, I'm very, I want to stop that right there and say, I'm very fortunate because people are, I'm, I'm not a hard read in most cases. So most of the people that I have around me, which are caring folks that want to see me succeed, pick up on it. They're intuitive enough. Well, first of all, I have smart people around me and they're intuitive enough to say, Hmm, he looks like he's struggling a little bit. Um, so I've been fortunate, and this is something that you, you, you're blessed with. You know, it's, it's a blessing that people like you and some of the other people that I have around me, the smart people, um, have, a, have the ability to see that, recognize it, and kind of pull me forward a little bit. And, you know, I don't, you know, I don't need a lot. But I need that. I definitely need that initial tug and maybe a follow up tug or two um, to keep, you know, to get me back on track. So um, and then, of course, we talk about that conversation within. Now we're back to now we're back to the conversation within is that now I got to say, once I kind of recognize I got to I got to reevaluate and say, Chris, what is what is required of you? Because you have to do what they call that that self-assessment. So what's required of you? Uh, in, in this case, um, we're doing a, I guess you could call it a train the trainer. Uh, actually right now, is what, I just recognized that this week. I was like, oh, that's what this is about. Um, Cause I'm not, t- I, I, I'm not, I'm not actually teaching curriculum right now. I am actually in training to teach curriculum. So that means that I'm actually in a learning phase for this next iteration of whatever what i'm being called on to do what i'm getting myself involved in so um it's interesting when you start to make sense of it again because it you know for me i'm a i've always said this and i will continue to say this because it's my reality is i'm a visual learner 
So I have to, you know, you can put all the books in front of me you want and I'll, and I'll, and I'll read and I'll do all that stuff. But at a at certain point in time, I gotta, I gotta go touch it. You know, I gotta go, I gotta go drink it in, so to speak, you know, get in the environment and really, in a lot of cases, we, we have to struggle a little bit with it before it to actually start to make sense to us. And it really, uh, for myself, it has to ignite this sense of, uh, the sense of pride, the sense of no quit, the sense of I can do this because that's the other part of the, with the self doubt is I go, can I really do this? Well, the answer is yes. But I go through this period where I'm like, I'm like, I, I don't know if I can do this, you know, but in, in 99, nine tenths times, it actually ends up turning out well for me. So I'm in the throat. I'm, I'm in the throes of that right now. Um, and I've really got, like I said, coming into this particular week, I'm going to have to really, you know, pick up my study, my study guides and commit some time and uh, just, you know, do a little bit of shuffling of my, some of my routines. But the beautiful thing is I've got some great routines that I've reestablished within myself. Um, so that some, so the discipline is there. I've just got to, I've got to literally just reapply it to what I know needs to take place moving forward. It makes perfect sense. So let's, let's dive a little bit deep into that. Cause obviously, uh, and thank you for sharing that about, you know, that this journey you've been on and where you've been, where you feel you are now. Um, and, and I think one of the most important pieces of that is that it is just that it is a journey. It's not that you have reached a point. You are still day by day, minute by minute, week by week, however you want to look at it, growing, evolving, taking in new information and sorting it out. Right. Because it, and I think a lot of people take that approach is once I figure this out, I, I'm, it's set and I'm done with it. And it's not that at all, uh, especially when you talk about that inner conversation. Uh, and, you know, one of the things that I always share when you're talking about that, that little person on your shoulder that's, you know, whispering in your ear or um, the split levels of how that happens. And one is the conscious piece of it. The other is the subconscious piece. And that's where the real danger is from a self-awareness standpoint or just being aware that there is this tape that's playing at a subconscious level, too. And even though consciously you may be tr trying to be positive and see the light and, and look at things, you know, as something that's going to move you forward, there's still this subconscious thing that's there that you really need to make sure you're aware and tap into because it can be sending those counter messages and that can be very subversive and, and you not understand that. Have you had any of those, those kinds of experiences as you've kind of worked your way through this? Yeah, it's, I mean, I mean, if I'm, I don't want to sound just um, harsh. Um, I don't want to accentuate it too much, but there's a, there's a battle that rages. Yeah. I mean, there's the part of you that is, you know, I'm very optimistic. I mean, a very optimistic person by nature, mm -hmm. but there's this other part of me, which is, you know, it's related to self-esteem um, and some of the things, maybe some of the trauma you've had in your life, how you were conditioned, you know, I mean, we, we had that discussion many, many times before. So, you fight that small battle. I, where I'm at right now is I've done so much work over this last two, you know, year and a half, two years to correct a lot of that and to, to keep me upright and, and, and looking forward that it's a smaller conversation now. You know, it used to, you, you used to, you know, you used to be, it was over 50%. Now it's probably 25%. That, that it has a, you know, has a hold of me. So I typically, uh, I'm able to knock it down a little faster. And, and we don't stay with that. So in other words, it's like something, it's something it's like you get a ticket. Let's, let's look at it like this. Let's just say I'm driving down the highway and I get a ticket. Used to be, I'd just be so upset. You just ruin your day, the whole nine yards. And now it's like, if I get the ticket, right, wrong, or indifferent, whether I was actually at fault or not, it's like, it's just a ticket. It's literally just a ticket. I got stuff to do. I got to, you know, I got to, the, the train has to keep going. So what I'm saying is don't get stuck in, because don't get stuck in that moment. Because it's just a moment. You know what I mean? Self-doubt should just be a moment. And it should actually spark, it should spark you to go and to keep it moving. It should challenge you to keep it going. 
you know, I right now, um, uh, I've got a, a gazillion, um, uh, a gazillion examples of that. So back to this thing that I'm involved in, I guess we're going to use that as kind of the, the, uh, the, the, the story today. Um, I'm sitting. And so I've got, I've got um, the director of um, educational development services. He's going to ultimately be my boss. Super cool guy. He's an engineer by trade. I guess you would call my counterpart in this process. Um, another guy who's an actual, we got to get him on eventually. He's an MC. Oh, wow. Okay. So he's an MC. He's involved. Uh, both of these guys are Latin. So they're involved. You know, he's in, uh, the, the MC is involved in the Latin community. We turns out we we know some similar folks. This is Hawaii. You know how that works. Everybody know everybody. So uh, anyway, he literally. I, so I'm just I'm playing shadow is what we, we kind of said. Well, this first two weeks, I'm just going to kind of shadow. Um, and so um so I'm dealing with two guys. So the, the director of uh, director of educational development services, his name's Mike. And then the other, the, the MC's name is Michael. Jesus Christ, we got so many damn mics and mics running around. It's not even funny. Um, so he literally, he, so he, he's doing exactly what I'm doing. He's learning. He's learning. I mean, obviously we're smart people, but he's learning this level of, because we're, what we're doing is we're, we're certifying these, this class in, being electronic techs now obviously we you we've been in the tech field forever and a day but i'd never that's stuff that's you should have learned like way way back when in the beginning you walked in the door stuff i didn't that i never learned yeah you know own, yeah. Yeah, yeah all yeah all this stuff that i'm like dude i've been a manager i've been a ceo i've been a finance guy i did all this next level stuff and we got all these people down at the bottom doing all this stuff I all of a sudden realized I have to learn this stuff. And that's part of where my anxiety was kicking in because all of a sudden the light came on for me. It was like, Oh snap, you actually have to learn this because you need to be able to teach the next group. So now, like I said, all this, uh, the spotlights lights are going off the alarm systems. So Mike, Michael pulls me in, Chris, come over here. He literally just, I mean, next thing you know, I'm sitting next to him. Before I even know it, I'm sitting next to him and we're talking about this and we got a simulator. We got all this other stuff. And I'm like, I'm just riding. Right. I'm like, I have no I mean, I do and I don't. Uh, but I'm like, OK, that's when the light really the truly the light really came on that I'm going to have to invest some extra time to get up on all of this. So I'm able to talk so I can really match wits with these kids. But like I said, I'm. This is really about the long game. It's not about this first couple of months. It's about everything beyond that. Uh, and that's part of the self-talk equation too is I have to recognize, be smart enough to be, as in, uh, to be intuitive enough to understand what my overarching purpose is going to be in this process. No, I'm not where I need to be. Am I happy about it? No, I'm not happy about where I am. Do I feel a little exposed? Yes, I do. Is it a big deal? No, it's not. This is just tell this is God's way of telling me that you are not 100% prepared for what your mission is going to be in the long run. Now, when I talk about the mission, Sometimes, you know, I was looking at this when we were this, remember you remember in the beginning, you said it looked like one thing and then it turns out to be something else. And the, the, one of the things I vacillated on last night was how, and this is something that just came to, just came to light for me recently was that I felt like for the last 10 years, I've been kind of aimlessly wandering through life. I mean, I've had success. We've been doing good things and being positive and trying to, you know, trying to do, um, you know, some of God's work. I don't, maybe I shouldn't say God's work. We've been trying to do good work out here and, and, and affect the community uh, and, and those that come in and we come in contact with. But I really didn't have a mission or a true plan or direction other than forward. It was always forward. But I didn't have I didn't have anything with like, Oh, that, you know, even though I, I'm sitting here in my condo right now and I can see the ocean. So kind of like the ocean. 
you know it's out there you know it's it's wonderful but my purpose what was my purpose I am for the first time in my life, Brian, and I, this, is a, this, is a, this is a big admission for me. I am starting to see what my purpose is. It's a little sobering. And that's big. That's a big realization when, when, when the, that light truly goes on and you realize what it is that you connect with internally. And then... It, it, it always, it's almost like they talk about a lighthouse, right? And how, you know, that's what you use to guide your way. And your purpose kind of is, is that same thing within you, right? So it's a very big moment in life. You know, there's a lot of dot connecting right now. Uh, the other the other question I had to ask myself, because as you know, I'm going to Wineye a couple of days a week. That's a, basically a 40 mile drive. My life has evolved around town. Now, for those that are not in Hawaii, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense. But for those that are here in Hawaii, when I say town, it makes all the sense in the world. My life evolved around a 15 mile radius. And I love it because we used to live in California and it was, you know, it was, you know, you're always on the road. I'm hundred mile a day. So to, to make that first initial drive, and then to turn around and have and do it again and do it again and understand that I'm going to do it again and I'm going to do it again and I'm going to do it again. The question opened up is, is this what I want? Is this what I really want? And every time I asked that question, the answer was yes, but it was validated by those young people that I'm, that I'm working with now, interacting with them and literally truly connecting with them. Now, this is something, like I said, I've mentioned earlier that I've been, I think I feel like I've been wandering for the last 10 years or so, but I've always tried to connect with younger folks and give them game and try to mentor because it was something that I got when I was young, but I didn't get enough of it. And I, you know, it's kind of like, the, it's kind of like somebody that was, a, that was a, involved in an absentee, absentee parent home and you become a parent and you're like, nah, that ain't happening. We're not, I'm going I'm to give that child or that young person everything that I didn't get. And I think that's kind of what's part of what's driving me also is the fact that don't get me wrong. My, my, my mother was, you know, for a single mother, she was, she was, she did the best she could do. So I don't fault her from, from that. I fault her on certain things, but I don't fault her as a whole. But the reality for me is I feel like all that stuff that I know was missing or that I've discovered that I, really believed I needed, I am now making the attempt to pay it forward to the people that are, in, you know, that, that are in my charge, you know, as, and as I've told, cause like I said, last week was, a was, it was really about getting comfortable in the environment, my new environment, as well as trying to attempting to bond and create, start to the beginning stage of creating relationships with basically 17 to 20 year olds. Uh, and it is, it is going well from that perspective. That is dry. That is going to drive me to be better. That is, going, that is going to ultimately drive me to be the person that the people that brought me on want me to be. 100%, 100% agree. So let's, let's look at that because we, you shared so much in that, especially I mean, we have to dig a little bit to help our listeners maybe understand it. But what you just expressed and that journey you've been on, especially just this recent piece of it from evaluating this job, evaluating your purpose, is it in alignment with Chris and who Chris wants to be and just so many different things, right? Um, the, uh, there's literally in that hours of self-talk. I mean, literally, that the, the, as you said, there's this internal conversation that's going on. And how do I feel about it? What do I really think? Is it Does it really resonate? And so forth and so on. And you're going back and forth with this. As you said earlier, it's kind of a tug of war, right, with, within. And I think that's the piece that we want to help people understand. Having the self-talk, positive or negative, is the part of the process. 
we're neither going to sit here and say that we can get rid of it because you never will. That's human nature and that's the way we function. But what we do want to do is identify what things within ourselves are not serving us well and then try to start to create self-talk that overwrites because you can't erase. And that's the other thing I wanted to be very clear about. Uh, it, it's like those neural pathways. Kind of once those things are set, they are there and they're not going to go away. Uh, but what you can do is create new pathways and let those supersede or be stronger than the previous ones. And that's the objective even with the self-talk, right? So I want to I kind of share a little bit too about just that piece of self-talk. I mean, this is what I do and this is what we do. And we get on, we share and we talk about experiences and helping and guiding but I'm no different than any other human out there. I have my same challenges and my same struggles and uh, all of that. So nowhere near perfect because there's no such thing. So this past week for me, especially the early part of the week was very challenging. And there was a lot of my own self-talk that I really had to wrangle and wrestle and get kind of tucked, tucked away back in its corner. And what it was all related to was, um, in some ways feeling a little overwhelmed because I have a lot of irons in the fire cooking in different, different ways. And there is a part of me that I am again, working my way through that wants to be a, somewhat a perfectionist. So that plays into it. So what's the, the bottom line driver was I felt as if all of the things that I was touching, I was doing less than I could. Right. Because I didn't have enough time to do this and enough time to really do that, enough time to really do this. So I felt like across the board that I'm just doing a complete disservice everywhere. If that makes sense to you. Yes. So, uh, yeah. Right. So that was my challenge for the week. And then what that does for me is it kind of puts me in this little bit of of a tailspin or almost that one throw your hands up and answer. I quit, you know, because if, if I can't do it all good, then damn it, I'm not going to do it. But that's the thing. You've got to keep that self conversation going and work your way through. And the key is what you just said, Chris. That's why I wanted to bring that up. It's getting back to finding what is your purpose. Why did you even start doing what it is that you're doing in the first place? And then let that be the thing that like, come on, come on. We can, you, you're still working towards your purpose. And these are just the steps and the hurdles and the mountains and whatever else may happen along the way that are there as you have to navigate your way through that journey. Uh, so knowing that even though we talk about it all the time, we suffer from those exact same challenges and that's what my week was like. But then that's why I'm still sitting here today going, you know what, this is a passion for me. I like doing it. So here I am in this chair delivering these messages and we'll continue to. And there are going to be some days when an hour before I'm literally dusting myself off going, all right, let's do this. But that is what it takes, I think, to persevere your way through. And that's the self conversation that you, I think you have to have with yourself. Exactly. hundred yeah. percent. Yeah, exactly. And it required, you know, the other thing about it is, uh, cause it, we, I, I swear, I think if we lined our movies up and run them, they're probably obviously the, they're a little bit different iterations, but I think at the end of the day, we're doing the same thing. You got to, you basically have a new job, you know what I mean? Same career, <laughs> new job, new people, new, uh, new things that are hitting your receptors, the whole freaking nine. Sometimes it, it hits where it's supposed to hit. A lot of times it doesn't initially hit where it's, you know, where it's supposed to hit, but you're smart enough, resilient enough, have been around the block enough times to know that, you know, even when it's that, you know, that moment of self doubt creeps in, because that's what it was for me, the self, you know, like I said, I said that in the beginning, I get those self that those moments of self doubt, they're just smaller moments. And I'm able to kind of swat them away and kind of keep, keep my, you know, re refine the focus of now find the positive, go back to the positive, go back to the positive, go back to the positive. And I think that's the difference between um, some of our training, some of our conditioning, um, and just who we have around us. I know I got you in my back pocket. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? 
I, I don't know who I was when I was talking to my guys yesterday, uh, my guys in California, we'll, we can get in a little bit of that at some point. And I was like, um, what I was trying to say was, and, uh, and I, and I've said this a million times regarding our friendship, you know, uh, with the, the, uh, the, the, we'll go, I know I'm kind of rambling a little bit, but let me settle, let me settle down here. Um, I was talking to a few weeks or maybe it was a month ago. I was talking to our Michael. Mm-hmm. And cause he's like, you talk to Brian. I'm like, I said, well, let me explain something to you. I said, let's just, so we we're clear here. I wanted him to, you know, cause he was in the past, right? I could tell he was kind mm-hmm. of in the past. You know, we pretty much talked every day and stuff like that. And I was like, sometimes I don't talk to him for three, four, five days. Occasionally depending on what we have on each other's schedule. I said, mm-hmm. but we always check in. Correct. You know what I mean? So if three days he ain't heard from me, either I'm going to text him or he's going to text me. Yo, what's up? It's just a, it's just a mic check. You know what yeah. I mean? That's all it yeah. is. Yeah. As long as you respond back with, yo, I'm busy as hell or whatever. I'm good. We'll, we'll catch up in a couple of days. I let it lay and I keep moving, right. you know, because I know what we have, you know what right. I mean? Mm-hmm. And I, he's settling into that now that because even though we don't talk for a few doesn't mean I don't think about you. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Do, you, you ride with me every day. The essence of Brian Murray rides with Chris black every freaking day. I'm out in the street. What would Brian do? You know, a lot that's, that's kind of one of my questions. What would Brian do? You know, to, to those that aren't versed in that, that's kind of weird. No, it's not. I have a I have a great support system in Brian Murray to where I a lot of a lot of your all your great mannerisms I take with me every day. Mm-hmm. You know, what I mean, not that you have bad mannerisms, but the stuff that I aspire to be is some of the stuff you aspire to be. So we're like minded people. Why wouldn't you ride like that? Why wouldn't you have that safety net and that safety blanket and that that informa- that that uh, that database to fall back on? That's next level. Oh, absolutely, absolutely next level, and, and I agree with you. With it. And we we work like that, right? That's yeah. You know, that's what we want, how we want things to run, and that's the whole thing about finding your tribe. You know, you people talk about that. Uh, th- those people that truly have your best interest at heart, but also will, when necessary, hold your feet to the fire, right? Because that that is the balancing piece of it, right? Uh, You need those accountability people, those accountability partners is what I call them, because the self-talk, self-doubt, this, that, the other, blah, 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 um, always creeps in there. But having someone who understands A, you, and then B, what it is you're trying to accomplish or trying to get to or trying to get done. Right. And we can help be a guide. We can be a sounding, sometimes just a sounding block. Right. You just somebody you can just spit it out because I just need to get it out and let it, let it. I'm not asking you to answer it or fix it or change it. I just need you to hear it. Right. Having those people in within your circle and, and that you can count on and rely on is a critical piece of the whole self talk piece. Because a lot of the times, if you can actually take that. Capture what you're telling yourself. Be aware of what you're telling yourself from a self-talk standpoint and then say, all right, you know, I need to stop pointing that conversation inward and just share it with someone else. And that's being that's open. You talk about vulnerability. You're talking about all these different things that it requires to do that. But what that does is, A, it helps you really wrap your head around it because you need to communicate it outwardly versus inward. And it gives you an opportunity to, if you want it, because that's the, that's how you establish your relationship. Get some outside feedback or perspective on your thoughts. Because they might. There have been times when this happened with us, Chris, and we both look at it. Well, that's one hundred percent right, man. Exactly what you said is is right. You know, and you go, wow, okay, right. So it doesn't mean it's going to be negative. Or it's going to be bad. Because sometimes that self talk or what you're telling yourself is the truth, mm-hmm. right? And it's having someone else say it, validate it. Now you can either take it and do something with it, take it and move it in a different direction, or sometimes it's just a matter of acceptance so you can actually then file it away 
get it out of your way and move on to the next thing. So all of that's important. So let me let me back up just for a little bit because I maybe uh, so I, let's give our audience a little bit of a a little bit more peekaboo into our lives on the personal side of things. Even though I know we're talking about personal things and personal development and things like that, let's give a little peekaboo into uh, our sure. lives. So I know when we before we went on air, I was talking to you about I've got you know we we most of us have most of us grown folks. Uh, we have we have we have a few circles of folks, right? So I got my main circle here in Hawaii, uh, consists of you know there's three to five of you who I lean into and lean on and spend a lot of time with. You know you, Vinny, um, uh, Gerald, uh, people like that who I consider my best friends as well as my mentors. Um, but I've got a couple of guys in California who I kind of meant they're, they're a little younger than I am, uh, young brothers from the inner city, good brothers. Um, and I've given them, uh, over the, I've known these cats for about 25 years, you know, as well. I've known them as just as much as I've, as long as I've known you. And so I've meant, I've kind of mentored them and given them because they don't have, they have not had some of the advantages I've had as far as the access to some of the people that I have access to being, being able to uh, travel like I've been able to travel and just some of the experiences I've been allowed to, uh, to, to participate in. So, but I've tried to give them an, an idea, even on their level, you guys aren't, you guys aren't pigeonholed into this one neighborhood lifestyle. You know, you, there's a lot of folks out here, that, they only know one neighborhood, man. I mean, it's, it's, that's a scary idea that you only know one neighbor. You have only have one, you only experience in one neighborhood. The world is such a large place. So anyway, one of the guys went down the QAnon rabbit hole. I mean, I, I saw it. I didn't believe it. I watched it for three years, three, four years take place. And actually, I didn't even recognize it to begin with because I was so busy trying to deal with my own life. Uh, I, I, I didn't have to, I didn't have the I didn't have the ability to to really kind of fit, uh, met it out you know ferret it out and he uh, so a few months ago um, we were talking and all of a sudden uh, oh it was he was anti vaxxer I mean it was I mean all I mean it was everything on that that scale and all of a sudden uh, he's about to get evicted from his apartment. His job has released him. He's turned into a hermit in his home. So in other words, his home has now become his prison. And he is so convinced that, uh, oh, dare I say it, that Donald Trump's going to swoop in and save his life and save his day and all of a sudden make him rich again and, or make him rich and all this other stuff. And I listened to that stuff for a while. And, you know, obviously, you know, I, was, I had my own battles I was dealing with over the last two years. So I, I, I was, I had to save me first. Okay. <laughs> In the day I got to save me for, I didn't think about saving anybody else. You know what I mean? I'm just not that I'm a strong swimmer, but I'm not that strong a swimmer. Save me first. You know what I mean? So, uh, so all of a sudden it, you know, I've, I've, we 180 to where I am today. Right. And all of a sudden I'm like, something is wrong. And then so I get to talking to this brother and all of a sudden I start to recognize it. So I'm having these conversations with this guy. And he's just blah, 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 blah. And I'm like, dude, what are you doing? So what do you mean? I said, what are you doing? I said, you're about to lose everything behind some bull. You know what I mean? And uh, so we fast forward to about a month ago. And he all of a sudden admits, I, I, went, I went 100% horribly left in the wrong way. And I was like, I said, okay. So you're admitting that, that you, you took the wrong path. Is that what you're admitting? I said, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be kind to you. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna try to be nice to you. You know? And he's like, yeah. And I said, well, I, I, I made some thoughts. Thank God he's a veteran. He's a, you know, he's a veteran. So he has veterans benefits and stuff like that. So I'm pretty much mapped out some things I think he needed to do. Um, and now he is someone in the beginning phases of that journey. So I had a four hour conversation with him 
two, three weeks ago. And what really got him was the fact that I admitted that I went through a period where I didn't care if I lived or not. That in some cases, I, I said I was too coward to do anything to myself. My prayer was, Lord, don't wake me up. That was my prayer. You know, I'm too chicken. I'm too chicken shit to, 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 to self harm myself. I just don't have that in me. Um, but I can also pray, Lord, just do me a favor and just don't allow me to wake up. So when I told him all of that, it broke him. I mean, it, I mean, it broke him down the walls. I mean, it came flood. I mean, I can hear him crying on the phone and he said, I, but you're so strong, Chris. I didn't know that about you. I said, see, that's because that's what happens when you're not listening. You know, I was crying for help the whole way. Those that, that, those that were listening to me knew that I was crying for help. And those that were in their own struggle don't have that, didn't have that ability to hear that message. I said, but I'm telling you, it can get better. I said, but there's a long, there's a long journey back up. And what you have to do is commit yourself to you. Commit yourself to what it is you think you, whether you know what you want in life or not, that's a ill consequence. There's no consequence to me. But what you need to do is start to, A, you need to say, hey, the first thing is I need help. What do I do? And have the courage to take one step at a time to seek that help, to, to, to look for peace again in your life. And then I just, so I just hit him with the, you know, and like I said, he has all the, the tools are there. They're free, you know? And he said, oh, you know, I'm going to go into therapy. And I said, let me stop you right now. I said, what I want you to understand about this therapy thing is don't put a time limit on it. Do not put it. Don't think that you can have three or four sessions or five sessions. And all of a sudden, because you start to feeling good one day, that you all of a sudden miraculously cured because you will not be. That is just that is you're setting yourself up to go right back. So anyway, we had a conversation yesterday, a group conversation, and I had to use these, some examples and some of the people, you know, some of the people in my life, like you, I had to tell them about the, if I'm your supporter, I got to be your tormentor. Sometimes I'm your tormentor, things of that nature. And, and basically I just told him, because I, th I think that that's real love. Um, mm -hmm. I said, you're going to get challenged. If, if you want us, you want me, specifically me, if you specifically want me as a part of your support group, I'm going to tell you how it's going to be. I said, I'm going to challenge you from time to time. When we have our little talks and you say, okay, that's when the questions actually start. Mm -hmm. So don't think you're just going to get away with I'm okay, or it's okay, or today's okay. I'm going to ask you questions like, so what does that mean today? You know, I'm going to ask you pointed questions. And that's kind of what revolves around the, when you get to the point where you start to rise again, that you're able to um, ask yourself the questions. Right. When you run onto little hurdles and the little roadblocks that you're going to run into every day, because as I've, I've made that very clear with those guys, I said challenges come every day. There's every always day. some form, some form of challenge. Right now, my challenge is trying to get through to the IRS so I can make payment arrangements on some tax money that I owe them, which is something I've been running from since the beginning of the year and now i'm realizing it's going to it's going to be a problem for me if i don't address it now while yeah. i have control of it yeah. as opposed to when they decide they're going to take control of it so i've been trying to really and i know that's kind of sounds funny people are like why would you admit that because it's it's my life you know it's it's this 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 is my life today i don't yeah. you know I, part of me feels embarrassed that i'm even mentioning it but part of me is there's a, it's, it's a reality, my right? Probably going yeah. through this, my neighbor's right. probably going through the same problem. Okay. Yeah. You're not alone. Trust us. Right. Right. So, right. Yeah. So and, what I'm, what I'm trying to get to, and I'll finish what I'm trying to get to is these are just the everyday day in and day out challenges of life. And if the, 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 and we all know these things, I'm actually getting to a point where I'm conditioned to just address it, to Correct. deal with it, to, literally take it on and not get caught up in the mechanics of it. Oh, it's such a bad thing. You know, for me, it's just money. I've made so much money in my life. You know what I mean? Money. I'm not saying I'm rich because I'm damn sure not that the fact that I got to still work, 
But the reality is money comes and money goes. You know this, Brian. You've been in some sticky financial financial situations. We all have. Yep. Where I'm at today says, I'm going to make this money. If I do everything that I'm supposed to do, I'll make the money. Yep. I have that ability. Yep. Understand what your abilities are in life. I can make money. I always have been able to make money. And this there is for a guy that's not, and this is from a guy who's not drawing a paycheck right now. <laughs> but I will be very shortly. Yeah, and, that, and that's the right mindset. And that's also the right self-talk because you are building that confidence within you that whatever that challenge is, you will conquer it. Right. And that, that, that that's what's important. So you touched on a couple of things. I really want to get to them while it's fresh in my mind. Okay. One of the things that you brought up, which I think is key, and you know, when we just talk about challenges in life, right? And life is gonna challenge us, et cetera, et cetera. And where I want people to really start to think about our topic today from a self talk, self conversation standpoint is when life is putting these challenges and roadblocks in front of you, to actually take a moment to at least step back and evaluate is the challenge there because of external the world life or is the cha the challenge actually there because of some internal things that you are doing consciously or subconsciously that are actually causing those challenges right because a lot of the times we always want to go them they they the world that you know it's it's everybody else's fault or responsibility except for us, right? And there could be some very simple things that we can change within our own space that change the trajectory of where we're going. And all of a sudden there is no challenge because you have overcome it by adjusting you versus trying to fix something out in the world that sometimes we have no control over. What do we have 100% control over? Our temple right here, right? And so that, yes. that's, I think that's the most important thing to focus on. The other thing I want to get back to real quick, and I'll, I'll let you come back because it's, it's fresh in my mind. As we were to you in, in your conversation there, you were obviously sharing some very personal, some very intimate things about just where you are in life. And that's the key, the vulnerability piece, because trust, it doesn't matter what situation you're in, you're not alone. There are hundreds, if not thousands, if not millions of people around the world who probably somewhere in that same swim lane as you are based on what you have that you that you're challenged with and by being honest that act here the way the mind works is this when you put those blinders on blinders have two effects yes you're blocking out the problem so you don't see it but you're also blocking out the answer to fix it that's the that's the that's the part people miss that's the key component you have to have the the vision open because how else are you going to receive or see the solution to the issue if you're trying to hide? Because it, it it works both ways. It's blocking both good and bad when you block it, right? When you look at it from that standpoint. So that was the only thing I really want to go back to is when you are putting yourself in that space of I'm going to stick my head in the sand and I don't want to see, well, your head's in the sand, so you can't see the solution either, right, in that, sure. in that scenario. So that's it. I just wanted to get that out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, so Chris, let's, let's transition just a little bit because there is a couple of things that we have talked about, um, regarding, you know, the self-conversation in this, you mentioned a little while ago, uh, earlier in, in, in today's episode, you said something about your purpose and that's something you really hadn't had or want cl as clear on as you are today. So I want to then dig one level deeper on that specific point, because I think your self-talk has a lot to do with that. And that is talking about what is the spark or the fire or the ignition that you are feeling now today at this point, that's, I guess, got boiling that purpose to the top. Where'd that come from? Is it the sense of community? Is it the sense of giving back? I mean, what's the, the that igniter, I guess, is what I'm looking for. Woo! What a question. What a question. I don't think there's one particular aspect or answer, and I'll let me try to do the best I can with it. Okay. Um, 
I think part of it is you said community. Um, you know, I've lived, you know, I got to go back to my childhood and, you know, we grew up, most of you, you and I, I know you grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood. I grew up in a predominantly black neighborhood, uh, fortunate enough to get out. Um, but there was a certain, you know, it was an old time, right? Um, you knew your neighbor, you knew your neighbor, you knew your neighbors on both sides, you knew your neighbors across the street. Um, uh, there was a time back in the day when other people's parents could discipline other people's kids, um, things of that nature. Um, and that's the kind of stuff that if, if you've lived it, 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 it never goes away. Um, and I see a world today where people are afraid to discipline their kids. They just want to be friends with their kids. Um, they, 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 these, there's a lot of kids out here that they get themselves in spots because, because of their, because of their, their parents' lack of. And I realize that there's different challenges that parenting present, you know, presents during that process. But the idea that you don't equip, you see things, a lot of people, and, and, and this goes beyond parenting. A lot of people see things and they don't say anything. They allow people to get themselves into situations. And I, and, and I realize that some of that idea is masked around the idea of minding your own business. Well, minding your own business sometimes can cause a lot, can cause loss, loss of life. It can, you know, it can, it can result in the, the taking away of freedoms different things like that. Um, and I see, un unfortunately or fortunately for me, I see that all too many times, too many days. I've always said this. I know you've heard me say it before. I have, I don't know what goes on in my brain, but I have the ability to see things. And sometimes what I see is not good. Sometimes, but, but I also have the ability to see what could be good if you just make a little bitty adjustment or a tweak. And I think that now that I'm coming into my quote unquote purpose, I'm understanding that I have a, I don't know if I want to say I have a job to do, but I have an obligation to say something sometimes to try to affect things in a positive manner, to try to, leave things better than I found them. Um, and that's up and including getting in my friend's business every once in a while. I don't enjoy it. You know, there's no, there's no medals that are going to be given to me. I wish I could get paid sometimes. <laughs> I really do. But uh, I don't know, man. There's just something, there's some gene or some emotion in me that cares. And that's the other thing I see. I see a lot of times we have certain segments of, of humanity that don't care. So they'll see you laying on the middle of the street and step over you or step around you, um, see you going through pain and won't say anything. Matter of fact, I, uh, yeah, I got, yeah, somebody told me the other day, you got a story for everything. <laughs> it's like, because I got a lot of experiences. So, you know, believe it or not, there's just a lot of experience. So I go to a, um, a water aerobics class when I, when time permitting, it's, it goes on three days a week. You know, I love the water. So it's, for me, it's another chance to get in the water. So it's predominantly women, right? You know, you know, that's male, female perspective. You know, <laughs> it's apples and oranges sometimes, right? Great. These are great. These are great. And, and most of these are older women, right? And so... I'm in uh, this class a couple of weeks ago and we're talking about the, uh, you know, that was it the chiropractor that killed his family and killed himself. Was that, and you know, that was all over money, right? Money, pride, and ego. Yeah. Money. Yeah. Yeah. Money, financial issues. Yep. And she said that she had another, I won't even call it a friend, but a guy that apparently somebody, some other friend of hers was telling him he, I guess he had just either lost his spouse or, 
some other things that happened and he, the guy was just kind of, he seemed to be spiraling down. And I said, are you guys talking to this guy? Well, I, you know, that's not really my business. I'm like, what do you mean? It's not your business. The fact that you're talking about it today says the exact opposite for me. I said, so what you guys, you know, I, I finally, my first response was it ain't my business, right? That's my first thing. It's not even my damn business, but I'm like, Oh no, I gotta say something. You know, I, I can't, I can't sit here and just ride and not say something. I can't do it. So I, I mustered up the courage to kind of confront her a little bit, not roughly, but I just said, I, 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 I tried to allow the logic of it to appeal to her. And I said, look here. I said, if that was your best friend, would you say something? Probably. I said, what you what you what you're failing to see here is however this is coming at you or coming to you it is a cry for help now whether you can affect it wholly across the board doesn't matter but you can be a catalyst to start the conversation that's what i want to impart upon you when when my walk away from you today is that you think about opening your mouth and saying something, hey, you okay? You know what I mean? Do you need somebody to talk to? Whatever. You don't have to get all involved in it, but you could at least be a catalyst for the conversation. Because I'm going to tell you right now, if this guy screws around and takes his life or takes somebody else's life in the next week or month or so, you're going to know how bad you're going to feel about this? You're going to feel horrible. Horrible. So I said, walk away with that. And with that, I, I cut. You know, yeah. she's like, she just it, it, literally, she was speechless. She had yeah. nothing she could say to me yeah. at that point. Yeah, no, absolutely. And that's the thing is that is that that level of burden of guilt that you have when, and as you said, not your responsibility to fix it, but being a catalyst or at least showing some care and concern. Um, and then, it, as you said, if something does go south with that and uh, the, that weight of knowing that, well, maybe if I would have just ask a question or made myself available. Hey, you want to grab a co- cup of coffee and sit and talk and whatever, something simple and easy like that could be the one thing, as you said, that changes the complete direction of where that person is in their life. But if you don't take that step, you know, that's a big weight to bear. It's interesting. I made a note because I think there's two things that our society, and you, you brought up childhood and growing up in the communities you grew up in and, and all these different things and how it's shifted and morphed over the years away from that. So two words that I made a note here, power and authority. And what's happened in our society, and I don't know how we really got there, uh, because those power and authority used to kind of be married together, and now they're divided. So let me give you an example. You, Let's stay with the family situation. Uh, you have parents and you have, you know, the, the especially teenagers when they get to a certain age, they, you know, kind of stand up and want to rebel and be themselves. And as you said, there's a lot of the times the parent wants to try to, I want, I want to be their friend and this, that, and the other thing. When we were young, the parent had both the power and the authority, 100%, right? Now it's kind of gotten to that point where each side has one or the other, but not both. So the parent has the authority, but the way society is shaped now with, oh, they're abusing me and I can call this person and you can't touch me at school and, you know, just, just so much. Right. But now, right, right. my yes, uh, my rights and privileges. Um, now the child actually has the power, right? Parent has the authority, but the child has the power. Same thing at school. I feel so bad for our educators. You know, you're getting into that space to a degree. Fortunately, if you a lot of the st- students you'll be dealing with, I've requested to be there. So a little bit different mindset. But still, teachers have all of the authority because I am the teacher. But they have zero power over the, over the child. Zero, right? So without those two things, I think, kind of being married together, it puts you in a state of, not really effectively being able to lead and not lead from the standpoint of dictating. And I think that's where people also can get twisted because that's not what I'm saying, but effectiveness. How can you effectively lead if you don't have both the power and the authority to make decisions, 
have those decisions carry weight and impact so that people uh, not have to confide, I guess is how I want to put it, but that there is accountability that's there. And that's the piece that's missing to me. And I, I see that all the time. And that even ties back, though, to our topic today, because from a self-talk standpoint, I think a lot of people have acquiesced into these little silos of this is my box. This is where I have power and authority. And then outside of that box, I don't have power or authority. And and that's how they kind of box themselves in mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and, and many other ways. And that makes them a less impactful, less caring person, as you just talked about. So it kind of leaves us disconnected. And I think that's another big piece that we're starting to see with our society as a general. It's like, what's the first thing that happens if two people start fighting on a street corner now? Everybody pulls out their freaking phone and videos it versus trying to say, whoa, whoa, whoa what's going on, right? So it, 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 it's almost as if we're living in this movie Right. And we're all independent characters who don't actually inter interact and relate and all these different things. No that's voice. Or re no voice or reason. No. Yeah. No voice or reason. Behind it. And that's a podcast for another day. So but I think it is important that we start to open ourselves up to be more engaged, more caring, more connected with those around us that might not be in that small circle. Right. Because as you said earlier, you've got these small circles, there's five or six here, there's five or six there. But there are obviously people that are an extended circle and sometimes just offering a hand, um, meeting for a cup of coffee, whatever it might be, can can make all the difference in the world. And we all go, that's not my responsibility or the old I don't have time. Um, but that's a, also a two sided coin, because anything could happen where you need to have that support and hopefully someone will be the person who reaches out to you as well. Right. Now, and, and now I understand something. You have to be selective about it occasionally. Oh yeah. Yes. You, you know, you have, there are different levels of involvement and you have to be, I, I think I'm, I think you and I are at, we're at a level where we understand that there, you're not going to, I'm not going to let somebody drown over here, but what's going to be my actual involvement. Am I going to actually call the lifeguard over and have him go rescue? So there's, that's going to be that level of involvement. I'm not going to go do the actual rescue, but I'm going to call it out, put a shine a light on it so that this person doesn't drown and die. Right. And right. having that ability to understand that there are, there are, uh, there are uh, varying and there are, um, there are choices, what you do and how you do it to affect a positive outcome. 100%. Now, one of the things I'm, that I'm doing right now with this, I mentioned bonding with these young people, bonding and creating relationships is getting them to understand that there is a, because there are, these are all, um, that's West Side, right? Why not West Side? It's country area. It's not down where we live at, where it's just, you know, it's overgrown with people and there's just stuff. And getting them to know that, there is a vast world, even beyond Hawaii, that that if they are here for what they're supposedly here for, they can partake into it. There's advantages, there are rewards, there are things that you know, travel. You know, that's the thing I've been thought. Like, you guys know you can travel for work. I mean, you when I said that, people were like, What? I can travel to work? Yeah, I said you can go to Guam, you can go to the Philippines go six months a year three months a month i said you know we worked in alaska you know I, and i'm using just the great thing about this is i'm not telling any tales this is real stuff that we've lived so i'm actually getting to tell it from a, from an actual part being able to that we've actually partaken in some of these things yeah we worked in alaska for two months whoa you talk about the eyeballs going up when i said we worked in alaska you know what I mean? It's like, I wonder what's Alaska. You could just tell, I wonder what Alaska is like. And there was a time when it was approached that we do that. I was like, what? We're going to do what? What the hell? Why would we do that? <laughs> I mean, that's, you know, that's where I was at that particular time. Why would we do that? But you know what? 
I wasn't fearful of it. I, I was, you know, sometimes you just kind of, you know, you just got to go along with the program, you know, and maybe not know you, you don't understand everything. That's the other part about life. You know, we talk about some of this stuff going, sometimes you got to just ride occasionally till you figure it out. You know, I've learned that, you know, there's been a lot of stuff I've gotten involved in over the years where you, sometimes you guys were pulling me. Sometimes you were pushing me. And sometimes I just said, just sit in the seat and see what happens. Yeah. Just take the time to take it in, you know? Yeah. Very important. So Chris, let's do final thoughts. You know, we, we've shared quite a bit and, um, both personally and just from our experiences and why we feel that what you talk about to yourself is so relevant because it can, it can so limit your, your whole thought process and what you're open to and your experiences and your journey in life. Um, but it can also, the flip side of the same coin is unlimited because it can take you any and everywhere by having that self-talk and that self-belief in yourself. So from a final thought standpoint, what is it you'd like to share with our audience that is that nugget you want them to take away from today? And I'll, I'll, I'll just bullet point a couple of things. Limiting beliefs. That's, we just, you know, we just went to that seminar. What was that? Was that a few weeks ago, a month ago, whatever it was. And I so tapped into that. Um, the limiting beliefs that I had and how I'm really wanting to break, break that mold. That is something that is, it's conscious and unconscious for me, but it's an every, it's an everyday thing now where, especially with me going into this new arena that I'm going into. And let me say this, what I'm going into while it is very new, very fresh and it's uncharted waters, I am very capable of succeeding at this on a very high level. I've had that conversation with myself already. Now it is really about figuring out the roadmap and what is going to be required of me to find that success. I already believe it. And this is a far cry from two years ago. You, if, if we were trying to have this conversation two years ago, we could not have had it. I was incapable of it. I'm not going to front. I was broken. But I am now come to the point, and I'll be, let, let, me, let me be clear. There is fear. I have fear in this. I will say that. But and people are like, how can you say that? When you know you have the capability. Of it? Because that's the unknown. I don't, you don't know what's around that bend. But I'm looking at it from the standpoint, as long as God gives me the time, allows me to wake up and, 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 and physically and mentally keeps me on, you know, keeps me, all my faculties are working, my body's working, I can get there. I'm looking at, I'm looking at one year ahead. I'm looking six. So this is the increments, six months, one year, two years, five years. That's how I'm starting to frame this now. And that is going to get me where I need to go if I keep that model in front of me, where we want to be in six months, where do we want to be in one year, where we want to be in two years, where we want to be in five years. The key here is I also have the support behind me to get it done. People need to, you, you need to, you know, I'm a planner. You have to map things out. Even if you can't see, even if the road map is muddy, you have to create a map in your head of where it is you think you'd like to go. I told my friends that yesterday when we talked. I said, you may not 100% know where you want to be in the next six months, one year, two years, or five years, but I guarantee you got ideas. Mm -hmm. Guarantee that. Use that as the foundation to begin with while you build. Right. 100%. It'll come to pass. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. That's, that's great insight. Um, and definitely the, setting that pathway. And, and so you have a roadmap for your journey is a key, key component. So that's very important. And as you said, the self-belief. 
for me, it's this, and I kind of mentioned it a little bit earlier, but I think it's, I'm going to want to go back to it because I do believe a lot of people struggle with seeing how changing their core value, what they tell themselves, their self beliefs and all those different things as such a mountain to try to change. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's so I want to alleviate that pain for you right now is your objective is not to change those things. Those things are what make you who you are, make you the unique person that you are. It's your life's experiences is what's brought you to today as to who you are. The key is to understand, recognize, reconcile with those things so you have an understanding of what they are and then say, okay, this is my baseline. What do I want my new baseline to be for myself internally as a person, as where do I want to get to? What do I want that to look like? And just as Chris was just saying, now you have to put together a roadmap or a plan. And are some of those old things going to continue to raise their head? Absolutely. The key is, as I mentioned earlier, you want to build the new pathways in your life to be stronger than so that they trump the old pathways in your life. Because the old ones, again, not going to go away. Can't kill them. Can't get rid of them. They're there. They're part of you. They're part of your whole DNA and your makeup at this point. However, you can build new ones, new bridges, new mountains, new roads to extend and move yourself from whatever level you're at now to the level you really want to tr transcend yourself to. So that's the part. Let's focus the energy and our effort there. Not so much on trying to fix what's broken, quote unquote, versus creating what's new that's going to trump that regardless. And that, that's where your energy and your focus should be. So that's my last thought as far as how I think you can have the greatest impact to move yourself forward uh, from a self-talk, inner peace, igniting a spark, and also finding your purpose standpoint. You know, you always spark one thing. Whenever, whenever you do your final thought, it always sparks another <laughs> final thought for me. So I'm going to lay one, one more quick one on you. Sure. Look at it. You know, we obviously we're in technology. Right. So let's look. And a lot of people deal in technology every day. You have the damn phone in your hand. So let's look at it from a technical term. Think of it as think of you as continually doing software upgrades. Sometimes you do hardware, some hardware upgrades, but. I look at my mind and how I live and how, you know, how I'm progressing and moving as a continuing software upgrade. And those upgrades come, sometimes they come weekly, sometimes they come monthly, sometimes they come yearly, biannually, whatever, but they come. I mean, I'm just not the person I was three years ago. I'm not the person I was 10 years ago. I'm, the essence of me is the same person, but as far as how I move, how I, you know, my goals and things like that, they are constantly upgrading. And I'm, I'm to this point today. Could I have handled what I'm the journey I'm on right now, 10 years ago? Probably not. Probably not. Today mm -hmm. I'm equipped and I understand what I'm supposed to be doing. There you go. Yep. Because of those upgrades that had to happen over that period of time and Absolutely. experiences correct 100 percent. chris this has been amazing thank you for sharing uh i, I again i think the audience will so much within this that twofold that actionable items as well as true golden nuggets life experiences and oh it's not just me because a lot of the times that's what it takes sometimes to realize that you are not the only one out there having these challenges and going through these struggles. And there are ways forward. And hopefully we gave you some great tips and some ideas as to how to start to proceed down that road. So uh, everyone, until next time, as I always say, take care, take care of each other. And uh, we'll see you soon. Mm -hmm.